In this lecture, we're going to talk about dielectrics and the dielectric constant, which was observed when we spoke about capacitance and capacitors. Now, let's recall what a capacitor is. A capacitor is simply a plate that has the ability to store charge. And this electric charge can then be used to do useful electric work, such as power a motor or a light bulb. Now, let's look at a parallel plate capacitor. A parallel plate capacitor is composed of two parallel plates of the same size that create a difference in electric charge. In other words, if we take this uncharged parallel plate capacitor and we connect our circuit to a battery, such as this battery, what happens is the following. Once we connect these guys, the anode releases electrons. The anode of our battery releases electrons, and these electrons travel into our into our first plate and our electrons accumulate on this plate at the same time electrons from this plate leave this plate and travel to our uh, cathode our cathode is where reduction takes place and reduction requires electrons and that's exactly why electrons leave this place and travel to our cathode now eventually when this guy is fully charged the amount of volt or voltage of this battery would be identical to the voltage in this so if this battery say has 1.5 volts this parallel plate capacitor when fully charged will have 1.5 volts the electromotive force will be 1.5 volts so if we take away this battery and now we place a light bulb or a motor instead of the battery this parallel plate capacitor will be able to do electrical work and will power or glow or make our light bulb glow or make our motor function now these parallel plates must be separated by some distance d if these plates were not separated by any distance, if our distance was zero, that means our plates will be touching. And if our plates were touching, then the electrons on this plate would be able to flow from this side to this side. And that means no electric charge will be created. No voltage is created. And if no voltage is created, no work can be done. No electrical work can be done. So, it's important that there is this distance C between them, and this distance will ensure that no electrons flow from this plate to this plate. As long as the substance separating these guys found in between these two plates is an insulator, is a non-conductor. In other words, the plates are separated by distance T, the substance that separates the two plates should be an insulator, non-conductor. Because if we placed a conductor, remember, a conductor allows electrons to flow, while a non-conductor does not allow electrons to flow. So, <clears throat> so if we place a conductor, that means electrons would be able to easily flow from this side to this side. The point is to put a substance in between these guys that does not allow electrons to flow. So we need to put an insulator. And this insulating substance is called a dielectric. And every substance has its own specific dielectric constant, a value that relates to that substance, the atoms that compose that substance. And we saw that when we spoke about capacitance, that capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is given by the following equation. Capacitance is equal to dielectric constant K times the area of our plate times this epsilon naught, a constant that depends on the Coulomb's constant, divided by the distance between them. Now, this dielectric constant refers to the insulating material that separates the two parallel plates. So let's look at the purpose of the dielectric. Now, the dielectric has three main purposes. Our first purpose is the following. It allows charge to separate, thereby creating a change in voltage. Remember, if there was no dielectric constant, if these guys were connected, or if the material separating these guys was a non-insulator or a non-conductor, or a conductor, that means that electrons would be able to flow, and that means charge would not be able to separate and that means that no change in voltage will develop across these two plates. 
So, the first and main purpose of our dielectric, our insulating material, is to make sure that charge does not flow from this side to this side. Now, the second and third purposes are the following. The second purpose is it allows capacitors to store more energy than usual. And a third purpose is it puts a limit on the voltage created by capacitors. So let's look at number two and three in detail because they are important. So let's examine point number two more closely. Let's see why dielectrics allow our capacitors to store more energy. So let's look at two cases. In our first case, we have a parallel plate capacitor that's separated by some distance T, and this distance is completely filled in with a dielectric, an insulating material. Now, within this dielectric, we have molecules that have a dipole moment. Now, we'll see what dipole moments are in a second. First, recall that if this capacitor is not charged, like it is in this case, that simply means that we have not yet incorporated a battery into our circuit. And that means that this plate and this plate have a net charge of zero. So if there is no charge separation, that means there is no electric field. And, there, and if there is no electric field, that means that there is no voltage difference between this side and this plate. Now, we just said that our molecules within our dielectric have dipole moments. What that means is the following. Suppose our molecule is composed of two atoms, atom X and atom Y. What dipole moment means is that one of these atoms is more electronegative than the other atom. So say Y is more electronegative. That means it's going to pull electrons closer to its side. And that will give it a partial negative charge and pulling electrons away from X will give X a partial positive charge. And that means our molecules within the dielectric will be oriented in some random manner in which our molecules will have a uh, dipole moment. Now, what happens once we incorporate a battery into our circuit? Well, electrons from the anode from the negative side will begin to collect on this plate while the electrons on this plate and this guy will lead to our cathode where our reduction reaction takes place. And so at the end, when our panel plates are fully charged, this side will have a net negative charge and this side will have a net positive charge. Now, the quantity of charge will be the same. The difference will lie in the signs. This side will have negative, this side will have positive. And now because there's a separation of charge, that means there's an electric field. And in an electric field, our molecules will orient themselves according to our electric field. In other words, these guys that were randomly oriented in this uh, situation because we didn't have an electric field, orient themselves according to our field. Now, because our field is doing work on these molecules, orient them in such a way as to orient them along our field lines, that means our electric field does work to orient the dipoles. So, energy is also stored in orienting our dipoles. And the energy is given by the following formula, where our energy stored in our dipole moments is given by the negative of the vector of that dipole multiplied by our electric field created multiplied by cosine theta, which is the cosine, which is the angle with which these guys are oriented. Now, that means the following, that whenever a dipole moment or whenever an electric field is created due to separation of charge, energy is stored in, in terms of electric potential as well as within the dipole moments. So on top of the energy stored in our voltage difference, there's also energy stored in orienting these dipole moments, these dipole molecules. So the final purpose of dielectrics is the following. Some dielectrics have a maximum voltage. In other words, if this voltage is achieved, our dielectric will break down and it will begin to conduct 
electricity to conduct electrons. So at this voltage or above, electrons will begin to flow from this side to this side, allowing our capacitor to uncharge, allowing electrical work to be conducted. And this becomes very important whenever using certain devices, because if your voltage goes above what you want your voltage to be, that means your electrons can begin to move from this side to this side, and electrical work can then be uh, transformed into thermal energy or, say, mechanical energy. Now, this maximum voltage is known as the dielectric uh, strength, and this dielectric strength has the units of volts over meters. Or